Today, I will show you how to build lightning fast applications using Redis Slabs, Cloud Foundry, and Quark. So, who we are in a nutshell, we are the leading commercial company behind Redis, founded in uh, 2011, GA, in February 2013. Since then, we managed to acquire 2,200 customers. Over 50,000 databases are on our service. Over 100 new databases every day. We are the second largest contributor to the open source service after Salvatore San Filippo, the creator of Redis, who is a pivotal employee. Uh, we raised a uh, large amount of money from good venture capitals, strategic investors, and angels group. And uh, we have offices in Tel Aviv and Santa Clara. Uh, this is our offering today. We, we manage uh, Redis Cloud and Memcache Cloud over all the notable uh, cloud platforms, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Software, as well as over um, all these uh, platforms as a service. Of course, people have web services, Azure, Heroku, and many others. Uh, by the way, we are focused only on Redis. In Memcache, we only translate the protocol between Memcache and Redis. So if you use our Memcache behind the scene, what runs is... So if you use Memcache behind the scene, what runs is Redis, okay? Our on-prem license will be very soon, and today we are going to demo our Redis Cloud Cluster over Bosch and Cloud Foundry. So, do you see it? The first thing that I do in order to create this cluster is Bosch Deploy. It will take some minutes, so I'll give you some stories about Redis and who uses it. So why Redis? Do you have the manifest? Yeah, we, I have the manifest. I can show you it later, okay? Um, Redis is the newest database, newest, newest NoSQL database. Everything is served from RAM. It's faster than any other database. We'll show you benchmark very soon. Um, it's among the free top requested database upon the, uh, among developers. This is a key value data store, but the value is not just a block. You can use many types of values, such as hashes, strings, lists, sorted sets, and it has something like 150 commands. You can also create your own commands. Uh, so it's very, very attractive. It has strong use cases, um, dynamic community, and very large ecosystem. This is the main reason why people are using Redis. Today, when you create a new application, you have to have 100 milliseconds end-to-end -end response time. If you cut the network latency, on average, it is 50 milliseconds latency, you left with only 50 milliseconds to process the request at your app. And you need to access multiple times with the database, so in order to do that, you must have a database that can process your request at sub millisecond latency. There is only one database on Earth that can do it, Redis. This is a benchmark that we did over AWS, simple key value store, simple request at the bottom. Of course, my SQL, 900 requests per second, over 100 millisecond latency. Then comes all the other NoSQL databases. The top is Cassandra with 12,000 requests per second, about 50 millisecond latency. Then all the relational databases that are in memory, which is VoltDB, MSQL, HANA, and many others, it is about 20k requests per second, um, between 10 and 15 millisecond latency. The couch-based implementation of Memcache is about 45 operation per second, 45k operation per second, 20 millisecond latency, and at the top is Memcache and Redis, sub millisecond sub millisecond latency, 80k requests per second, and if you pipeline Redis, pipeline means that you sending requests without waiting to the response, and then all the requests are sent in a batch, and the Redis has less context switches, you get 250 requests per second at sub millisecond latency. This is Redis. These are the verticals that we see, social apps, online advertising, gaming, financial services, but there are so many others. These are the major ones. Um, these are the use cases that most of our users are using it. Timelines, followers, Q, 
cache, just messaging, geo search, leaderboards, job management, real-time analytics, and many others. Just to show you a few notable use cases of Redis, um, Twitter uses Redis for everything regarding timeline. They have multi-terabyte in memory, 300,000 read requests per second, 5,000 multiplied by n, and n is the number of followers. It can be very large. Writes per second. Weibo, the Chinese Twitter, use Redis for everything. Counting, reverse caching, top 10, last index, they have over 20 terabyte in memory, 6 million reads per second. 600,000 writes per second. Pictures use Redis for object graph, per user and per board. Stack Overflow uses Redis for free level of cache, local cache, site cache, global cache. GitHub uses Redis to match user repositories to server names. HipChat to know where user are, which user are in which room. This is very interesting. Upo uses Redis. The users to know what the users want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat is using Redis for 4 million messages per day. 500 instances, everything in round. So why Redis labs? So users choose us because we provide infinite seamless scalability to Redis. As you probably know, the open source Redis is limited by a single instance. Yes, there is a beta of Redis uh, cluster. We, by the way, contributed a lot to this beta. But it's still limited. Once the Redis cluster will be available, you won't be able to do all the commands across all shards. This is something that we saw in our system. Second thing is true high availability. We provide in-memory replication inside and across data center, and very soon across regions. The truth is that uh, over the last two years, we managed to survive over 100 node failure events. We're running over cloud. Five or six total outages of data centers without losing a single byte of failures of data. This is true reliability. Stable top performance, as you have seen, Redis is very fast, but on the other end, it's very sensitive to um, virtual environment and cloud environments. Uh, so we managed to overcome this, and we managed to overcome uh, noisy neighbor pheno phenomena and weak instances, and be able to migrate your shards across instances according to your role. Last but not least, once you create a Redis instance on our service, everything is transparent to you. you have a single endpoint, you don't need to deal with clusters, nodes, auto failover, data persistent, just work, look at the uh, metrics, and make sure everything works good. We invested over 20 many years in this technology. We have 15 expert, Redis experts on our team. And this is in a nutshell what we do. So before starting the demo, let me explain you what I did before. Uh, I didn't press the yes. <laughs> so it will take. It is going to take. <laughs> so it is It is going to take four minutes. Um, so let's take questions, but first let me, let me explain you uh, how our cluster works. We first create nodes. These are unrelated to the Redis that you run on the top of it. And then you can create as many Redis as you want over this one, in these nodes. You can create a single shard Redis, you can create two shard Redis master slave application, and you can create a shard Redis. The truth is that on our service, we can manage over 200 shards on a single node without degrading the performance of the Redis. And if we see that there is some degradation, we just migrate shards between nodes or adding nodes if needed. But you can truly do an over-provision with, with your uh, infrastructure. So just create at least three nodes because you won't quarrel. 
And then your user can create as many as databases as they want. And if you reach to a certain threshold, you get an alerts. So um, where we are? <laughs> Any questions so far? So you need to meet. Yeah. What do you think of the Oracle in-memory database that runs today? Uh, I just learned that. Uh, what, what is the name of the Oracle database? I, I forgot. No. Uh, no, 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 there is another one. Uh, no, not, not time stands, that was for coverings. Oh, what was it? Um, so they are going to use Redis. <laughs> this is the bottom line. They are going to integrate Redis as part of their uh, infrastructure. Um, and maybe they are going to use Redis labs, who knows? Any other question before the demo will start? Automatic scaling of the uh, Redis instances on RAM. Are you getting that? Okay, so, so the way it works, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a proxy in front of all our Redis uh, services. So once you deploy your Redis, we start with a single shard. Once it starts growing, we reshard it with behind the scene. Because you are accessing to a proxy, you don't see what happens behind the scene. Okay? Uh, our proxy makes sure that all the requests go to the right shards and you can use a regex rule to configure it or whatever you want in order to make sure that the keys that are going to be uh, processed together are going to be on the same shards. Okay, so this is the way it works. Um, so the last one is starting now. Any other question? Yes. What's behind that deploy? Okay, there is a, you know, you know there is a, a huge file, Bosch file. Um, <laughs> oh, it's finished. And uh, as you can see, Bosch VMs, um, there is a free nodes cluster here that I just created. This is a micro Bosch environment. Again, we always have one number of nodes to, to maintain quorum. Um, yeah? What's the piece that we're using to run this Um Yeah. yeah. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so we can start. Uh, once the cluster is created, you have a UI that you can start working with. You can see the Freenode cluster. And then, as an IT manager, uh, you go and create a plan. You just use the same uh, name for the plan that they're going to use all over. Here, this is going to be one gig, and let's call it CF Summit Demo. Save. Okay, now let's set the credential of the uh, broker for Cloud Foundry. By the way, this UI is for the IT manager. It is not for the users, okay? The user has another UI that I will show you in a few minutes. Once created, let's do uh, this. creating the um, Cloud Foundry Broker. And let's uh, make our plan public. So if we're not remember all the nuances here. So 
this Coban will make the plans that I just created public. and see the plans that I've created. Okay, you can see it. Uh, now let's create a service, which means a database will be created. So we need to go back to the um, console, look at the databases. It will be pending for a while. We will already have UI. Because this is this environment runs over AWS and it uses Route 53 and Route 53 sucks. This is, <laughs> this is the truth. Uh, so a few more seconds. Uh, this is the time it takes to create a uh, database about uh, 30 minutes. 30 seconds. Sorry. Meanwhile, what I can do is to um, to bind this database to a service. Okay, it's active now. Let's bind this database to a service. This service is called Try Redis. So it will to an application. Uh, this called uh, and let's start this application in order to the binding to take place. Okay, and meanwhile, I can run some query. Some reason, some request over this to see how fast it is. Um, this is what the users see, by the way. As an IT manager, I was able to SSO to the user screen. This is what it sees. I haven't yet started to send data to it, but uh, this is the user database. This is the endpoint. Now I'm going to benchmark it with uh, some benchmark tools that we wrote. Um, called uh, Redis Benchmark or Mempeer Benchmark. <laughs> it will probably not work because I cannot see the password. <laughs> Anyway, let's try to run the uh, try Redis applications that I've just created. Um, so this application is, uh, is connected to the database that I've created. Uh, it's a simple uh, Redis um, example set H if you see you see that it works. Get H, get H multiple times. Now let's see that uh, it's shown here. I have a key. This is within H. Uh, this is it. By the way, we, we are very proud of this screen because it includes many, many metrics that you, uh, that you can look at uh, with Redis. And you can compare between different metrics. For instance, I would like to see the read per second with the write per second. Okay, so I have these two screens here. I can uh, compare the memory used with the memory limit or with the uh, number of keys, etc., etc. So this is it. This is how to use Redis over Cloud Foundry and Bosch. Um, and again, this is what the user sees. Uh, this is what the admin sees. You can manage multiple users here. This is a pure multi-tenancy environment. If you have more questions, I'll be your class.